All right, I've got my pose. I've got the scale of my creature in its environment. I've got my placement. I might end up cropping it because this part of the composition isn't really doing much for it. So I'm gonna use my, my move tool and my guides and then just put a tentative crop, like kind of crop lines here and here. So maybe a more square, square format composition is what I'm thinking of to really show off my creature in this environment. So you are allowed to crop your landscape. Now I'm looking at where all the feet touch the ground and I am using my eraser and I am blending away. I am erasing from the internal composite foreground that I created that is overlapping my creature. This can be done large or small. So internal compositing means you're copying from what you already have in order to overlap something. And that's a great way to kind of bring the texture of the world onto the feet of my creature without having to erase away from my creature. So the paw is going behind this rock, right? And by erasing away at not quite full opacity, that gives me a little bit of that that color and tone mixing in with the paws. And you can see that with the spider webs on these paws. You can even see kind of shadows around them. Now this one, that paw is, looks like it's in water and looks like it's sitting on top of the water. That's not going to work. So what I want to do is internally composite from the middle ground, just take a chunk of it, From this back from this middle ground layer and then duplicate it command J and then move it up above my creature and then I can play with the layer opacity on that right and then I can erase away from it and kind of blend that in so whether your creature is in grass in snow in sand or in water you can make that more believable by using compositing. I can even take a chunk of the water, like I have to actually decide, okay, where is it actually entering the water? And I'll cut that shape on the paw. Scoop the water out, copy it from the middle ground, move it up like so. Take its opacity down just a little bit, but keep that edge sharper. And now here's the beautiful trick of some of the tools we've used. I'll make it a little bit more opaque so you can see it clearly, right? Now I can use dodge and burn just on this little bit of ground that I composited in. And I can like have the water disturbed where the where the paw is in it so that it's catching the light a little bit. So I can use dodge on the midtones, use it pretty small. And hit the highlight. I can use it small and a little bit sharper if I really wanted to find that. Like the water is catching the light as the paw enters, maybe even causing some little ripple in it. Right. And then I can use burn. And you very often need both to pull off a visual illusion. And I can show a little bit of that shadow right at the edge of the water. And the shadow of the ripple coming from and it's really subtle. But when you don't have it, let's see how much flatter it might look. This water is kind of too dirty to really have to worry about reflections. 
but sometimes you want to map a reflection into the water as well and then play with opacity. Okay, so I've got the feet. I feel like I need more shadow there. So what I'm going to do is take my burn tool. Make it a little bit stronger. And really, because water blocks light, really burn on top of the paw as it's entered the water. All right, so now I've got the placement, I've got the feet. Now I want to play with the overall color adjustments, right, of my creature. So to do that, I have to make sure it's rasterized, which it is. If you need to rasterize it, this is on my Puppet Warp version. You right click on the layer and you'll see rasterize as, a, as an option. But always keep a uh, a smart object version as a copy, as a backup. Okay, now I'm gonna take that rasterized version, I'm gonna duplicate it again. I'll mark this as red, because now I'm gonna play with direct adjustments on my creature. Direct adjustments to match my environment. And I might as well put the tree in front. Where is my tree? There it is. As kind of a guideline, I might want this other tree as well, so you can internally composite with the tree. And this is where we'll pick up next class, doing the layer adjustments on the creature, because we're at 1210. So even though this video is a little shorter, it gets us set up for success next class. So let me make a duplicate of that, and then move that up above my creature. And with every step, we're hopefully going to sink it more and more into its environment. All right, save your work. And then I have lab hours until 2 o'clock if you guys want to keep working, if you have questions.